away. Okay, great. Uh, let me start sharing. Uh, can you see both screens or half? Yeah, yeah we can I, see it. Okay. No, uh, it's uh, you. I can only see the the web web page. Yeah. Now it works, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, so yesterday we have uh, started our Docker and compiled the framework. Um, so today we will use that framework to run uh, a few exercises. Okay. Um, so uh, first, let's get into the red Docker to get started. Um, so here you can see some commands to do this. Um, you can see here in the title, I'm, I'm already in this Docker. But if you are not sure where you are, uh, we can do this. We can first list all the dockers we have. You can, you can uh, copy this command line. And uh, do this, right? So you can see I can have all the dockers uh, or some dockers from uh, previous sermon schools. All right, now let's uh, restart this docker for our session. Yes, thank you. Okay, now we are inside the Docker. Okay, first, uh, I I just can I do a poll to see if everyone has found the the red Docker. Uh, if you are, please. Press yes. If you are not, if you are not sure, please press no. I know uh, some people have compiled the framework using a different container, but as long as you have those modules, that's fine. You can use that Docker, okay? Anyone has any issues? If you have uh, issues, please post on the Slack channel. I think people will help you. Uh, so let's update our uh, materials for the summer school. So you can get into this summer school folder and then Get poll and get updated. Okay. Okay. Um, and now let's get into JavaScript folder. Let's see JavaScript. All right. Uh, let's then get in the build directory. So we will run our uh, framework in this directory. Okay, the, all the results will be in this directory as well. Uh, so next step is to copy. So we have finished this part. Uh, next step is to copy the scripts we, we will be using for this hydro session from this sermon school folder in the current working directory built. Okay, so uh, you can see already I have this folder, but let me just remove it. Now it's gone. Okay, now let's just uh, copy this line and uh, run it.
Okay, so now you can see I have, I'm having this uh, script. Uh, okay, let me try another poll. Uh, let's see. Clear all the feedback. Um, can I do another poll if you have done this? Uh, can you press yes? If you have issues, uh, please press no. So this is uh, important for us to move on. Please, uh, please finish that. Okay, any, any issues uh, for the other people? Okay, so uh, let's first take a look what is inside this folder. Okay, so you can see we have those, uh, we have more folders. Uh, so in this config file, uh, config folder. So we have those uh, XML files. Okay, so we have those user files for, the, for all those exercises. Uh, and in the data file, so we have uh, some uh, experimental measurements and then we will use it to make some comparison later. So there is, there is one person who has issues. Uh, so what is the problem? Can you tell us? Um, hello, yes. Um, well, nothing. I was just uh, on the on the building the Jetscape and music, uh, well, with music and ISS, and just right at the command where I make the make uh, dash uh, J4, I got a error that says that cannot file a file that it's called uh, smash slash configuration dot H. Uh so did, uh, I thought uh, you built this framework already, right? Uh, are you still in the building part? Um, I thought I did it yesterday, although may, I might be uh, repeating steps because um, I got in a little bit late and you were already uh, on this part. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so actually after yesterday's session, I think uh, uh, I realized that might be some problems because uh, 
because uh, Smash Session is also using the same uh, directory. So maybe we have some conflicts after Smash build uh, the, the framework. But uh, uh, yeah, so we sh the other instruct instructors should uh, pay attention to this in the following sessions. Um, so can someone help them to to yeah, I'll be make on the work? The, so on this the... is related to this uh, Smash session, I think, because we are using the same folder that uh, causes some conflicts. Uh, yeah, Pablo, if you can post on Slack, uh, I can I can take a look. Thanks. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. I will. Uh, all right. So. Okay, so in the Jupyter uh, folder, we have those uh, Jupyter notebooks. Okay, we will use them to make some plots. Uh, if you don't use Jupyter, that's fine. There's also Python scripts for you to use. They basically do the same thing. Um, so there is a plot folder, uh, which, will, uh, will, which will save all the plots we make from those scripts, okay? So later you can find them out in those folders. All right, great. Now we can uh, do, we can start, sorry. We can start to this. So before that, we can start this uh, Jupyter notebook. So we will let this Jupyter notebook to run. run. Okay, so if you press control button and then click on this link, you can open this link. So you can see, we can see all those uh, files in our browser. So now uh, we can let the Jupyter notebook to run in the background, but you can press enter button and then you will go back to this, okay? So next we can run some scripts. Uh, can you press yes if you are on the same page? We are about to run in uh, those uh, scripts. Mm, I'm getting less people. Um, so what is your status? Um, can someone type in the chat, chat window perhaps? If you are not uh, here. Okay, so let's move on and uh, start running those exercises. Uh, so 
So we have explained those parameter files yesterday, okay? Um, these are the exercises we will do uh, now. So let's start with the first exercise. Uh, basically, this exercise is just to run JavaScript framework, and then we get some final particle list, and then uh, make some plots. We calculate some observables and compare to uh, data. Uh, so this is certainly not the easiest uh, exercise to start with, but I just want to show you how to run this whole framework uh, to the end. Okay. So now let's run those uh, those lines. Uh, actually, we can just uh, copy this line and run them all together all at once. So now uh, make sure you are in the build folder, then copy this line, and then we can start. Okay, now it starts, okay. Um, so uh, let's take a look at those lines. Um, so you can see we have three parts in, actually in this command line. First, first line is to run JavaScript with this provided user file, okay, for this exercise. And then uh, after this uh, line finishes, uh, the code generates generates a test out file with the final hydrons. And then we will use this script to process this test out file and then um, calculate its uh, pseudo rapidity and the uh, azimuth angle of those hydrons and then get a hydron list. Um, the last line will use this uh, script to move all the results in the same folder named run exercise one. Um, so all the results will be there later. Um, okay. If you are running this, uh, please press yes. Otherwise, press no. If you have issues, can you type in the chat window or Slack? All right, when we get the code run, we can uh, take a look at the uh, this user file we provided, okay? So let's take a look. So this is the user file we provided for JavaScript uh, for this exercise. Um, you can see here, it's not uh, that complicated. We change a few parameters as a user, and then the rest of the parameters will be taken from the master file as default values. Um, here you can see this any events means we are running 10 events uh, and uh, so 10 events, 10 just give events, okay? And then we reuse Hydro, it said true. Um, so that means we will, uh, okay. So uh, we will reuse uh, Hydro for every 10 jet skip events because we are running uh, 10 events in total. That means we will run only one hydro events and reuse it for all those 10 events, 10 JavaScript events. So uh, we reuse it, this hydro for doing uh, particle sampling, okay. Um, okay, um, so this is the random seed. We, we set a random seed. So we will generate different results, uh, everyone. Uh, this is the initial state uh, parameters you can see. 
max z is zero. So that means we are running the uh, boost event uh, simulation with only, we, we are focusing on mid repeated. Okay, so we are looking at one slice. We focus on the transverse evolution. And these are the parameters for Trento. Um, so you can see here, we, are, we set the projectile and target. So we are running uh, gold gold collisions at 200 GeV, center of mass energy. Uh, this is the normalization factor. We will talk about this later. This is how we set the centrality classes from zero to 5%. This is the pre-equilibrium stage. Uh, so we installed uh, free streaming as our pre-equilibrium uh, module, but here in this example, we set it to be now. So we are not running any pre-equilibrium dynamics. We will uh, pass the output from Trento directly to hydro module. Here we use music, okay? And then we change three parameters. This is the shear viscosity, the eta over S, which is a constant. And this is an option for the temperature dependent bulk viscosity. And then we set the freeze out temperature. Okay. Let me see, there is an issue. Um, Okay, um, Derek, take a look uh, and other people on slide, thanks. Okay, then after the hydro session, we will have the freeze out surface, okay. And then uh, this is for the particleization module. Uh, here we use ISS, okay. So this number of repeated sampling is one. So that means for every, uh, JetScape event, we only sample once. Okay, but as we said, for all the all those uh, JetScape events, we use reuse the same hydro uh, profile, hydro uh, freeze out surface. And then we set this to be one for pro perform resonance the case. So that means we after we sample all those uh, hydrons including resonances, those resonances will decay into stable particles. Um, and then we will obtain a list of stable particles. We, in this case, we don't feed those particles into an afterburner like a smash. Uh, so we will st study how the afterburner will change our observables in the, the transport session. Okay, now uh, let me see. I think I'm, I'm. Still sampling particles. Actually, my laptop is slow. <clears throat> you pay? Yeah. There's a question in the Slack channel. Mm -hmm. uh, can you, can you, can you see your, can you look at your Slack channel? I, don't think I can read. Okay, so let me read, read this to you. Uh, repeat, could you repeat step once again? Yeah, I, I'm looking at that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so I think Derek posted something. Um, yeah, I think that is the, the, the way to check. Make sure you are in the build, build directory before you run that script. Okay, um, so let's actually go back to the beginning of the code so we can take a look what happened there. Okay, so you can see here we, uh, this is where we started. And then uh, you can see the framework initialized those uh, modules, initial stage, uh, stage which is Trento module pre dynamics. Um, so here we set it to be now. And then we use a uh, music module for hydro stage and then use ISS for the particleization stage. Okay, so we set this uh, to be on 
if you remember in our uh, user file so that we can generate this test out.dat file with hydrogen list. Uh, okay, and then and this part is uh, to print out those parameters in different modules. You can see, okay, so this is some parameters from, from Trento and uh, parameters in music and uh, these are parameters for ISS. Okay, so this is where the 10 events uh, start. Again, okay, it prints out uh, some output from Trento, and then this is where uh, music starts. This is uh, when music is finished. Okay, so there is a question on Slack. Uh, yeah, so reuse hydro is to save comp uh, computing time uh, in this way. So we we don't run uh, we, we don't run uh, hydro for every JavaScript uh, event in this exercise. But still, uh, of course, you can run uh, you can you can run uh, hydro for each uh, JavaScript event you, if you set it to be uh, false. Um, so in our XML file, there's no e loss modules. Yes. So we are not doing um, any jet energy loss uh, simulations. So we are focusing on the soft sector. Uh, okay. So because because when we built the framework, we didn't uh, turn on those modules. So in this framework, we don't really have e loss modules, and uh, so those. Uh, parameters in the master file is not relevant. Okay. Okay, so this part is to sample particles. Okay. Um, oh, it's still ongoing. So, okay, let me do a poll. Um, so, how is everyone uh, going and doing here? Are you used Going well, so if you if yes, please press yes. Otherwise, press no. If you have issues, can you type in your question on Slack or in the chat window? My laptop is a bit slow, this is old. So, uh, okay. Let's see. Okay, finally, it's, it's done. Okay, now the events is uh, over and then uh, we are so this is to run the second line of that uh, uh, command line, okay? This is to process the test out .dat file. And then it collects results into this folder. So you can see now in the hydro session, we have that uh, 
run exercises, okay? And we have those results. Okay, let me ask uh, if you have finished. Sorry. Jeez, I pressed the wrong button. All right, if you have finished, um, can you press yes? Otherwise, press yes, no. Okay, I think some some people uh, running the framework, which is very, very slow. Uh, so are you using the new MacBook? I, I heard uh, it is very slow with Docker. All right, um, that, that's okay. We can, we can look at some results together, okay? Um, so now uh, let's go to this Jupyter Notebook in the Hydro session, in the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so if you don't use Jupyter, uh, if you use Python, you can see here, you can go to the build, directory and then run this uh, script. So that will also do the work, okay? So now we uh, go to the Jupyter notebook, then open the notebook for the first exercise. All right, so you can see, you can run those uh, cells by click, shift, enter. You can do this one by one if you like, or, or you can run them all, run all. Okay, now we have all the results. Uh, so you can see here, we will uh, talk about the observables later. Okay, so you can see we have uh, PD spectra, we have uh, identified the product yields near mid rapidity, and we have mean PT. Your phone's not holding a charge very long anymore. Uh, Sorry, is that a question? Okay, let me, uh, maybe let me clear the feedback. Um, so if you have got those results, please press yes. If you haven't finished yet, uh, please press no.
So to answer the question slide there, uh, so if you go to the Jupyter directory, you will find that Jupyter notebook. Okay, now we can have a look at those results. Okay, uh, when, if you are still running, that's fine. Let's take a look um, together. Uh, so what is going on in this notebook, right? So first you can see here, this part is to read in the hydrogen list we generated. Uh, you can see here, we, I ran the 10 events and then I, I can see here, I read in 10 events. And then this is the histogram. Uh, function. So what we do here is to first generate a, P, a list of P, PT bins and then uh, count how many particles are in each PT bin. And uh, then afterwards we can calculate this PT spectra and then we count the total yields of different uh, of that particle species and then get the mean PT of a particle species. And then this part is to uh, give a, a, a particle list uh, that we want to uh, calculate. So here, these are the particle IDs from PDG, particle data group. Then, then um, so here we are looking at three uh, species, pion, kion, proton, we have those IDs. And we pass those IDs to the function and then calculate their uh, distributions. This part is to read in uh, some measurements from that data folder. Okay, and then we plotted this uh, uh, measurements and uh, our calculation. Uh, okay, so you can see we ran 10 events and then we didn't really tune a lot of parameters. We uh, touched a few parameters and uh, you can see it gives a pretty good uh, results, right? Um, okay, now we uh, are comparing the total yields of different particles near major rapidity. Um, so uh, you can see this is measurements, those open symbols. Uh, those solid symbols are the uh, calculations. Not, not bad, right? Uh, and then this is the mean PT of those particle species. Okay, so you can see what we have done so far. Uh, we just, uh, yesterday we built the framework and then we ran the script. Uh, we ran 10 events, you can run more certainly to get more statistics and uh, do the other calculations of different observables. And then we plotted them, we get some results comparable to experimental measurements. Um, so it's pretty easy, right? So it's pretty easy to use a very handy framework. Uh, okay, uh, so let me clear the feedback. Uh, okay, so is everyone uh, finished? Uh, can you press yes if you are finished? So we are going to leave this exercise if you are done. If you have issues, please uh, let us know. So are there some people who are not uh, responding? And so uh, what, is, what, is, what is the issue? If, if you can let us know.
and people are uh, organizers, I know. Uh, so let me see. Hmm. Okay, so some people's frameworks running very, very slowly. Um, All right, because of time, let's uh, move to next exercise, okay? So, uh, let me see. All right, um, later you can take a look uh, what is inside the, in those test out dot file and the hydrolyzed file, okay? So I have some explanations here. Um, all right, now let's run the second exercise. All right, now let me see. So if, if, uh, if the Jupyter Notebook uh, occupies your uh, window, you can, you can press enter again, and go back to the terminal. And then we will do the second exercise. So basically it is uh, very similar to the first exercise. Uh, at, let's start running first and then we will talk about that. So, uh, okay, so let me go back to this uh, instruction, okay? So in this exercise, we will add this pre equilibrium dynamics, which is free streaming. Uh, so I'm not sure if anyone, if everyone running it uh, properly, let me, if you have issues, please, please press no. If you're running it, please press yes. Um, if I, there was also a question in the chat, um, how the mean PT is calculated, if it's just an event average or if you do something else. Yeah, so uh, basically after you get this PT spectra, right? So you can uh, uh, integrate over PT and weighted by PT, right? you can get the PT, right? Of course, you need to divide it by the total yield, so you get the, uh, you get the average PT or mean PT. So this PT spectra is the average over those uh, events, 10 events. Lupay, I think the yeah. question, question is more like this, but the PT is calculated in every event and then average over all events, or we, you do, we make the PT spectrum first. Yeah, yeah. so we over. make the PT spectrum first, uh, I think. Yes, let me see. Yeah, so we first get the uh, PT spectra by averaging over those events, event list, and then, um, integrate over PT and weighted by PT to get this mean PT. Uh, okay, so, all right. So in this sec second exercise, we are including this uh, pre uh, free streaming a module as our pre-equilibrium dynamics. You can see here, we added those parameters, okay? So this is when the, the evolution starts and this is when the uh, free streaming stops. Here we specify the, uh, the module to be free streaming Milna. That is the module's name inside the code. And this is the input file that are not uh, touched by 
the hydro uh, by the by the framework. Also in this example, we ran an ideal event. Um, so here you can see shear viscosity A to of S to be set to be zero. And then uh, bulk viscosity is, uh, is chosen as this option, which is also a zero bulk viscosity. So we want to run this ideal hydro in this case. And then later we will use it as a comparison to the later, uh, later exercises. All right, if you are uh, running this exercise, can you press yes, otherwise press no. So I also have a troubleshoot a troubleshooting uh, slide for you. I'm not sure if anyone has that issue. Um, so if you have this uh, problem, so it says uh, free stream mailer is attempt to be added, but free stream is not installed. That means when you compile the framework, you didn't uh, use this flag. So you may have this problem, um, but still you can run your built framework. Um, so to do this, we just need to uh, set this pre-equilibrium module to be null, and then it will work. Uh, but you may generate different results from mine, but that's, that can get the code run. Uh, Okay, you can take a look. This slide is um, integral. You have that problem. Hmm. All right. Maybe I should remove this. Maybe it's a bit distracting. Huh? Um, okay. Uh, so let me see. Okay. So in this exercise, we will uh, actually we uh, have generated those those uh, files that we want to plot. Uh, And uh, so we will plot a few uh, uh, evolution re results, including eccentricity, momentum and isotropy, uh, and uh, the space-time evolution of the entire hydro. So we need those uh, files to make the plot. Um, all right, so when the code runs, let's maybe take a look at those, uh, this Jupyter notebook okay, first. We still need to wait it to, to finish. Okay, so in this file, um, 
you can see first we will read in the evolution of this uh, evolution file. Okay, so we will read in the space time evolution of the entire uh, hydro evolution. Um, and uh, this is to read in the Fraser surface. And then we can make some plots. Uh, okay, so maybe my laptop actually is pretty slow. If you have finished it, uh, you can make this, you can run a script to make those plots, okay? So uh, I already have those plots here. So I will use this to uh, talk. Okay, so you can see here, I'm plotting this uh, freeze out surface. Uh, as function of x, y, and t. Okay, so you can see this is uh, what it looks like. Uh, it is defined on constant temperature. And uh, you can see here, it takes longer time to freeze out. That means it, here, maybe it's a hotter spot. So uh, the fireball will have a longer lifetime uh, before it freezes out at this temperature. So it takes a longer time. So it shows a bump in this freeze out surface plot. 3D plot. Okay, and then uh, we plotted we plot this 2D contour plot uh, in a transverse plane uh, at initial time. Um, so here, this is the temperature uh, contour plot as function of x and y at initial time. Um, this is how it looks like. And then you can see those white dots here. These are the scatter points from the uh, freeze out surface. All right. So then uh, later we plot this uh, evolution as a function of tau and x at this y when y is equal to zero. Again, those white dots are the scatter points of a freeze out surface. And then finally, we will make some movies from those uh, results. Um, so now I cannot place the music, uh, sorry, the movie. Um, let's see. Maybe I should reduce the number of events. <clears throat> All right, so let me see. So if you uh, have finished this exercise, I mean, at least running, please press yes. Oh, wow, everyone's faster than my laptop. Still running. So, okay, so you have uh, ran this uh, Jupyter notebook and get the results. Great, so if, if, uh, if not, please press no, uh, no. Okay, any question about this Jupyter notebook? Abhijay? Abhijay, do you have a yeah, comment? It's not a, it's not a question, but I'm wondering, is it possible for the people who generated uh, these plots? Maybe can they post one plot on, on the Slack just to see what they're doing? <clears throat> That'd be okay. Yeah, sure, please. Mm -hmm.
yeah, you are encouraged to post what you get on the Slack channel. So we can see. Okay, so there is a issue on Slack. Um, if you get something printed out from Jupyter Notebook, you can press uh, enter to exit it, I think. Some, sometimes it, is, it says it is not trusted, that's fine. Okay, so let me again. Clear the feedback. All right, so my laptop is still running. <clears throat> All right, that's fine. So if you have finished this exercise, please press yes, and then we will move on to the next exercise, okay? So if you have any issue to follow up, please let, let us know. All right. Um, so let me briefly explain what we will uh, what we will do for the next for the next exercise. <clears throat> There was a question in Slack about the random number seed for, for the calculation, whether it's the same for everybody or whether it varies. Yeah, so we use the same uh, random number, so we will get the same results. Yes, so we only use a, ran a different random seed for the first exercise. So we will get different results. I mean, we set it to be zero, then we get different results. All right, so in the, uh, let me see how I'm doing. Okay, finally, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Can't believe it. <laughs> All right, so in the third exercise, uh, so we will run this. Uh, fortunately, this one will be uh, faster because we don't need to run, we don't need to sample particles. Uh, here we will plot uh, some uh, files generated from uh, music, including the eccentricity and the momentum isotropy. Uh, so to see effects from shear viscosity. Uh, so in the exercise two, we run the ideal hydro, right? So in this uh, exercise, we will use a non zero eight hour vest and the zero bulk viscosity. So we will focus on the effects from shear viscosity in this case. <clears throat> All right, let me just, we can just copy this and run this. All right.
So in this exercise, we removed that ISS uh, modular in our XML file so that it won't sample particles. Uh, okay, now let me pull. How about this? We take a short break to uh, resolve issues if people have, and then let, let the code run at the same time. Uh, is that a good? Okay, why don't we why don't we do that? It's ten o'clock. Let's uh let's let's get back at uh what ten fifteen? Is that okay? Uh maybe ten uh, ten minutes after ten. Okay. So we will stop at ten fifteen. Ten ten. Okay. All right. All right. So we take like five minutes, uh, sorry, eight minutes for a break. And then if you have issues, then we can resolve it. So you can follow up. Okay. So and at the same time you can get the code ran. So if you have issues, please press no, and then we can help you. Can you post your question uh, on Slack so that people can help? So if you have finished those exercises, actually finish this uh, run, run, and then you can run the rest. You copy this line and paste and, paste and run it, um, and you can do further so that you can get the results. Uh, it's pretty easy just to let it run.
All right. Um, so, okay. So I have finished uh, the exercise three run finally. Um, so we will make some plots uh, with that output. Before that, let me let let's start running the exercise three. Okay. So just let the code let the code run, and then we can go to the Jupyter notebook to make some uh, plots. So let's open the Jupyter notebook for exercise three. It's really slow today, not sure why. All right, now we have this uh, Jupyter open and then we will make some plots from the hydro evolution. So uh, as we discussed uh, yesterday from that lecture, uh, so the Isotropic flows are very sensitive to the shear viscosity, but uh, to get to calculate those isotropic flow coefficients, uh, it's not. I mean, that will need a lot of events, a lot of particles. So we don't have enough time for that. Um, so instead, we 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 uh, plot some quantities defined in the hydro stage, which can be uh, thought of as some estimator of those uh, those isotropic flows and. Uh, look at the effects from shear viscosity, okay? Um, so let's just run this. So here you can see I'm reading in the results from exercise, exercise two and exercise Exercise three. So we'll make this comparison. Exercise two is an ideal uh, evolution. In this case is the evolution with shear viscosity. Uh, all right. Then, so if you are here, please press yes. Otherwise, press no. Oh. <laughs> this way, we have a lens to show you. We have. All right, great. Seems uh, people are work going well. Um. Okay, so if you have issues, press uh, press no, please. Okay, now we can take a look at those uh, files. Okay, um, so if you don't run those, uh, if you don't, if you haven't got the results yet, you don't. If you don't run the uh, Jupyter notebook, you still can see those plots. They will be the same exactly. Okay, so you can see here we uh, first we plot this average temperature as a function of uh, proper time. Let me see that. Okay, so um, this uh, average, when you do this average you, uh, here, this is weighted, I mean, integrated over the uh, transverse plane and weighted by the energy density. That is how this is defined in music. Um, and then we get this uh, temperature average. You can see uh, this solid line is for the ideal case and this uh, red dashed line is for the case with shear viscosity. Um, so we know when you have shear viscosity, the, uh, there will be more entropy production, or we can call it viscous heating. You can see the temperature is, is, is higher than the ideal case as expected. Um, and then this is the average velocity. Um, so I think in music, uh, there is some calculation for the average uh, low, uh, gamma factor. Uh, Lorentz factor, and then use that gamma factor to calculate this average flow. Um, so with this, um, so uh, here in this case, at least in this calculation, we see with the shear viscosity, this average flow is, is slightly higher. Uh, this is maybe because you know when we have shear shear viscosity, it tries to reduce the flow and isotropy. 
and as a result, it 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 uh, makes the flow radio flow on average uh, slightly higher. Okay, so this is I I, I uh, in my opinion those uh, quantities can help us to get some insights, but uh, <laughs> with different definitions, sometimes you can have different results. So. Uh, all right, and then this is the special eccentricity. Um, so we discussed the definition yesterday in the lectures. Um, okay, so we can see here with uh, shear viscosity, uh, the eccentricity, uh, ellipticity here we are plotting is slightly uh, lower than the ideal case. Um, this is could be from uh, the fact that when you have shear viscosity, the uh, the lumpiness gets smoothed out by the shear, vis shear stress tensor. And then uh, this epsilon two is reduced as a result. So this is the uh, momentum isotropy. Um, so uh, momentum isotropy can tell us some uh, the, the, the difference between the flow in the y direction and the x direction. So we can see here, um, that is what we get. Um, so finally, we see in the, in the late stage, when you, when you have shear viscosity, the, flow, uh, the momentum isotope is uh, smaller. But at, at early stage, we see some, uh, at, uh, during some stage, it is uh, the other way around. Um, so, maybe not that intuitive for this stage, uh, but we know, I mean, when we have shear viscosity, you can reduce the uh, flow isotropy. Uh, that is what we see for the late stage at least. Again, I think that this may depend on the definition of different uh, quantities. Um, okay, so let me see. Okay, so let me... Is there any question here? All right, so the fourth run is uh, still ongoing. Uh, but let's, let's move on to the next exercise. Um, so in the fourth exercise, uh, what we do is to uh, change the shear viscosity and bulk viscosity at the same time. So in this time, we set shear viscosity to be a very, very small value. And then on the other hand, we use non-zero bulk viscosity, which has a peak near the phase transition temperature. Uh, okay, so in this case, we will focus on the effects from bulk viscosity. <clears throat> Uh, so on my side, it is still running, uh, but let's take a look at the notebook first. So in this notebook, we will do the same uh, calculations, those uh, observables, okay? Um, as what we did for the first exercise. Um, and then we will compare the results from the second exercise and the fourth exercise. Um, so to see effects from bulk viscosity. Um, okay, so let me ask. Uh, so if you are here, uh, please press yes.
So it's okay if, you, if your code is still running. So now we know how to run the code, right? It's pretty simple. Um, and then we, uh, I mean, later you can run this uh, Jupyter notebook. That's fine. That's totally fine. So you will get exactly the same re results because we are using the same random seed. Okay. Um, so, okay. So uh, here uh, in this exercise, as we said, we will plot those observables as we did in the first exercise. Uh, so we calculated mean PD there, right? So here we will calculate mean PD for those two exercises <coughs> and uh, do the comparison. Um, okay, so here we are not comparing to experimental measurements. We didn't choose those parameters very, very carefully, not tend to compare to experimental measurements. Here we just uh, calculate those uh, observables for those two exercises. Uh, that is what we get here. Um, and to make the comparison. Okay, the solid case is from the uh, second exercise. It is ideal. And dot dash line is for this exercise with the bulk viscosity. Um, so this is mean PD. Um, maybe you can see um, at different PT bins, uh, you can start, you can see the uh, yields is higher when you have this uh, bulk viscosity. Uh, one reason could be when we have bulk vis viscosity, there will be more entropy, entropy production. Uh, so we can have more yields, okay? So this is the total yields near uh, mid rapidity. As you can see for different particle species, when you have bulk viscosity, they are higher. And uh, this is the most interesting observable to see bulk viscosity is a fact, right? We discussed this in the uh, yesterday's, yesterday's lecture. We said uh, when you have bulk viscosity, the radio flows development is slower. So finally, those uh, uh, emitted particles will get pushed less from the radio flow and uh, they will end up with smaller in PT in that sense. So as you can see, uh, when we have those, when, when we have shear visc, uh, sorry, bulk viscosity, the mean PT of, of those particles are uh, lower, right? As, as what we expected. Okay, so uh, that, that's fine. I'm still running, but uh, I will get those results, um, exactly the same results. Uh, because of time, we, we should move on. Uh, so any, any issues here? Any questions in this exercise? So after this one, we have only one left. Uh, so we will play with the Sims widget to get some intuition uh, with realistic simulations. And then we are done. <clears throat> so if you have a question, please ask now. Yeah. Right. So if you think it's okay to move on, please press yes. All right, so let's move on to the final exercise. Um, we will open this widget here. Uh, okay, so at this point, let me 
just uh, stop sharing this terminal. Can you see my uh, browser still? Yes. <coughs> okay, great. Uh, thanks. Let me see. Okay, so, uh, okay, so if you open this widget, uh, so first let's uh, play with it together. Uh, I mean, let me show you how to uh, play with it, uh, and then later you can play with it by yourself. Um, okay, so here you can see two panels. On the left hand side, this is some parameter, uh, some parameters with some ranges. Okay, this is the parameter uh, panel. And here we have uh, some observables. Okay, so this is the parameterization of shear and the bulk viscosity as a function of temperature. Uh, Okay, so you can see, let's go back to the uh, parameter panel. You can see each parameter has its range, uh, lower limit, upper limit. This, these, these ranges are what we believe to be physical based on our knowledge uh, from the previous studies, okay? So, uh, and then uh, to construct this widget, what we do is, uh, uh, is the following. So first, uh, we sample, we pick uh, parameters in each range for each parameter and make different uh, com combinations, parameter combinations. So they can represent different locations in the parameter space. Uh, and then we run realistic simulations with those parameter uh, combinations and then get those observables, okay? So, and then finally, we end up with those continuous uh, values for these parameter ranges, okay? So that to get that, we need to do some interpolation between those uh, picked parameter uh, combinations, okay? For that, we need to use some emulators, for example, Gaussian process emulator, which we'll be discussing in the phasing sessions. Um, and basically it uh, just, you know, it tries to interpolate between uh, different uh, uh, observables uh, so that it can uh, give us this uh, uh, results, okay? And then you can tune these parameters continuously, you get the correspondingly, you can get the observables. Uh, so by playing with this rigid, widget, we can see how different observables respond to different parameters. Um, okay, so let me show you a few parameters here. Um, um, okay, so here, this, this first is the energy normalization. If you remember, we, I showed some energy uh, distributions uh, from Chento, or you just plotted actually the energy uh, distribution in the transverse plane, right? It, it looks uh, lumpy uh, distributions. And then, but still we can uh, put some normalization factor uh, which can tune the overall uh, overall values of the energy density. Uh, okay, so you can ex expect when you uh, when you increase this normalization factor, that means the fireball is harder at the beginning. So it uh, will have a longer lifetime, and of course, it starts with a, a larger entropy density. Uh, you can expect to see. Uh, larger yields for different particles, okay? So here, this is the pion yields in different centrality classes. This is proton yields. Uh, we can focus on them and we expect them to increase when we increase this normalization factor, right? So you can see here. Uh, right, let me make it larger. So you can see uh, this, the yields are shooting uh, over this uh, data points now, right? Um, also, you have larger uh, transverse energy, uh, slightly larger uh, mean PT as well. Um, so as we said, when you start with the hotter uh, initial temperature, the lifetime will be longer. 
So the radial flow will have more time to be built up. Uh, finally, those particles may have larger mean PD. Um, okay, now let's uh, turn to other parameters. Uh, let me first uh, refresh this, uh, go back to the default setting. All right, uh, let's pick a few of them, okay? So for example, uh, this multiplicity fluctuation, um, in some sense that they can increase the, uh, the lumpiness of the initial energy density in the transverse plane. So if we increase this fluctuation, uh, we should expect to see larger uh, isotropic flows, right? Um, so here, this is also, there is another uh, observable, this is the mean PT fluctuation. You may expect uh, this fluctuation will be increased because you have larger fluctuations in the initial uh, profile. Uh, so let's see. All right, so you can see this is increased and uh, uh, V3 is uh, increased currently. Okay, so V3 is responding to this parameter strong, more strongly than V2. That is because we said V2 is mainly driven by the uh, lipidicity uh, from the Omen shape overlap region. But uh, on the other hand, V3 is driven by the uh, triangularity, which is mainly from the fluctuations. So you can expect V3 will respond to this fluctuation strong, more strongly. All right, uh, next parameter we can try is the nucleon width. Um, of course, when you reduce the nucleon width, uh, the initial energy density will be lumpier, right? So that is, uh, you can again, expect to see a larger isotropic flows, V2, V3, V4, and uh, larger uh, PT fluctuations helps. Uh, so let's reduce this value to make it, it lumpier. All right, so you can see those isotropic flows are increased, right? As expected. So if it is too large, that means the initial stage is very, very smooth. And we will end up with smaller uh, isotropic flows. All right, let me turn to the parameterization of, uh, of shear viscosity, uh, those parameters. You can see this controls the parameterization of shear viscosity, these few parameters, which is shown here, okay, as a function of temperature. So uh, we can just tune, let me see, um, the shear viscosity at the king. So if we increase this value, then this overall uh, shear viscosity will be uh, shifted upwards. So that means we will have larger shear viscosity. And uh, we said when you have larger shear viscosity, the isotropic flows will be reduced, right? So let's see that. Let's see that. Uh, let's increase this value. Okay, so you can see those isotropic flows get, get reduced and this is shifted upwards, right? All right, I will try one more. Um, so this bulk viscosity max, um, which will shift, uh, if we increase this value, then this curve will be shifted upwards. And as we said, it will, will, will reduce the mean PT, right? Um, so let's focus on these two observables. Let's increase this. And uh, you will see the mean PT is reduced. All right, um, so I think that's it. Um, so you can uh, play with it more 
if you like later. Um, so any, any question? Yeah, so there is a comment from Slack. It would be nice if we can see the effects of shared viscosity on flow coefficients in exercise three, yes. I agree, but uh, to calculate those uh, anisotropic flows, we need a lot of events, a lot of uh, particles. We don't have time to do that uh, in, this, uh, in this exercise, but if you like, you can do it by yourself. You just need to increase the number of, e number of events. You can increase it to a much larger value and then repeat exercise two and exercise three. Um, and then you use that, uh, you use our Jupyter notebook and then run through the results, you can compare. Uh, but of course you need to uh, add some scripts to calculate uh, E2, for example. Okay, are there any other questions? Some people are typing in Slack. <clears throat> I see nothing, nothing more on Slack or on chat. Yeah, okay. So again, if you have questions, you can post it there and then we can answer them uh, later on even. Um, and so uh, I think that's it for this uh, hydro session hands on. And then, uh, yeah, that's it, thanks. Okay, thank you, Lipei, for a very informative session. So we'll reconvene at uh, 11 o'clock for the smash session. Okay. We'll see you later.